<laughs> Robin. Well, Tom Papa, it's a pleasure seeing you again, sir. It's always good to see you, fellas. Why are people compelled to jerk off on video? <laughs> this fucking asshole. Can't even get a heart on either. Oh, uh, gross. Say, yeah, how did, is that footage from my house? <laughs> how do you do that for the whole world to see? I don't know. Oh, yeah, is, this, yeah, yeah. is this what we're going to see in the go-to-meeting meeting today? Yeah, right? <laughs> and you're trying to get intelligent uh, tweets right. in the uh, know, comic debate. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> oh, you're saying I should put my penis down and then tweets my yeah, expectations are a little too yeah. high yeah uh, a little high it's my like... mother would say they were pecker tuggers <laughs> chip and uncle into that chat room there's a bunch of pecker tuggers in there pecker tuggers <laughs> yeah they're yeah, tugging their peckers <laughs> oh i, I know they pushed cnn to a side street oh. they, they didn't let them on boylston for whatever reason i don't think they're letting anybody on boylston. Some of the other news networks look like they're on boylston really yes they did oh cnn CNN is on one of those side streets where all the brownstones are. <laughs> Sam, are you happy that Rob's coming in today? Yeah. Yes. Nothing new, huh? They, I was about to ask that. Nothing they new. They haven't. Uh, well, they know. That means it's like breaking know. news. FBI takes charge of Marathon Probe. They've been that's, they've that's, taken charge the second it happened. And that's they've been pulled, the breaking news all morning. Yeah. They pulled something out of that apartment. It looked like they were wheeling something out. Yeah. Some kind of. Uh, Device, snack fernal machine, or something. Oh, Maybe. I wonder. If, I wonder at what point that conversation took uh, place, where the guy goes, uh, "Who's in charge here?" And the the Boston <laughs> cop goes, "I am," and the FBI goes. Not anymore. <laughs> I love that scene. Like it happened. It had to happen it yesterday. To, yep. What movie is that? Not anymore. Every, Every movie that's movie. ever been made. Every <laughs> movie where the feds take right. over. Yep. Yeah. This is my that's jurisdiction, Ford. Yeah. It was your jurisdiction. <laughs> that's a big one, though. Die Hard is a good one with that. Where it's yep. the, that fucking guy from The Breakfast Club, I think. <laughs> that's who, who the cop is. Yeah. I'm in charge here. Not anymore. Not anymore. Meanwhile, not. they would already know that. It's yeah. like, oh, yeah, the FBI is kind of taking over here. Yeah, of course. And, and, and relieved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No one ever cool. brings that up. Texting is, uh, honey, I'm on my way. <laughs> yeah. Thank God Thank the FBI is here. I'm getting and out of this. No cop cares that his fucking, the investigation is being taken over by somebody else. Uh, I wanted to write the report. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Some, God. Someone uh, sent me a link to a family guy scene. Huh? Where Peter Griffin uh, wins the Boston Marathon. Oh, yeah? No. And uh, it's really quick. I'll just play it through my phone. I'm Bob Costas here with Boston Marathon winner Peter Griffin. No. Peter, how did you do it? Damn phone's busted. Maybe I dialed wrong. Well, that wasn't on an episode. Uh, I, somebody I, I, somebody I, I, put I, that together I, recently. I don't know. Yeah. Wait, is that from, when is that from? Uh, it's uh, someone put it up online yesterday. Someone cobbled that together. You think they cobbled? That's why yes. I'm bringing it up. You think? Absolutely. Oh, that's not for an episode. I don't know. Come on. Huh? He's coming. Rob Zombie's coming. That's silliness. Does anyone know if that was ac actually from an episode? No way. That'd be a little strange, don't you think? Exactly. It's either strange or in very poor taste. That would have been like fucking premonition, right? Is that the word I'm looking for? Why didn't you pre-order his his new album? I, I just buy it when it comes out. But real fans are like, yeah, yeah they the want it early. Yeah, exactly. I get it at the same time. No, you won't. No, you won't. Get on iTunes. Oh, I don't like your high-pitched, exasperated <laughs> answer voice. <laughs> it's, like, it's like he's getting ready for the prom. Yeah. <laughs> hey. My voice is changing. <laughs> well, no, I'm. Uh, we we got a, a minute. What's going on I with the Osbournes? Before. Some are saying they are breaking up. Jack is now saying they're not they're breaking not, up, yeah. and it's all bullshit. But I'm, they have video of uh, Ozzy basically leaving his house with boxes and stuff. Uh, yeah. uh, I'm bummed to hear Ozzy well, relapsed. Um, they he did. He said he's got 44 days now, or 45 days. But he, for the last year and a half, he's issued an apology on Facebook to the fans, his families, like my bandmates. He goes, oh, was crazy he all shit. fucked up? I guess it was a crazy year, man. I didn't know it. I thought he was sober, and how, I'm, I'm how, bummed for him. How long was he sober before this? Don't know. I a while really though, know. right? Yeah, I think so. Seemed like it. So, uh, I hear they're not getting divorced, though. Jack said it's bullshit. They're not getting divorced. Um, maybe they're separated. I mean, maybe the drinking or whatever fucked him up, and maybe that's why he's sobering up now. Oh, right? Maybe. I'm wondering if Sharon left because of that. Yeah, I don't know. Well, there he is. Say, hey, Rob. What's up, Rob? What's going on, bro? Robbie. <laughs> Take a seat. What's up, Eddie? Hello. How are you? How you doing, man? Hey, how are you? Good to see you. I was doubting that Tom was uh, a friend of yours, but apparently so. Oh, yeah. 
man. Yeah, we saw the smile. I was like, <laughs> no, I'm, I, I didn't say that. I'm friends with Don Zombie. Yeah, <laughs> yes, Donnie. that's the guy. He just lives a <laughs> look of disappointment on his face when I walked in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Um, yeah. Oh, that guy. Oh, uh, the only two people I play uh, Words of Friends with are sitting in front of me right now. It's little Jimmy and Rob. Oh, really? And I, I haven't beaten either of you ever. And you haven't... <laughs> my, actually, mine actually says I'm supposed to remind you because you haven't played in like 15 oh, days or something. <laughs> I was I slacking off trying, there, yeah, Tom. Like, Hey, look at his phone. I don't want to admit to exactly. days, Tom. Um, <laughs> just a spiky case. We were just talking about... Yeah. You just have to play and just uh, accept that Just accept I'm going to lose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always lock up when I'm down to one letter and I know I'm going to lose. Yeah, I, just, hate, I hate that codependent reminder thing. Just try Tap to, someone and remind them. No, they should fucking know. It's their turn. <laughs> just play the U and get it over with, Tom. <laughs> I might have the Q and you're going to have to deal with it. <laughs> That's it's the fucking terrible. worst. I'm so terrible at spelling. I can't... Can't like play that or Scrabble or anything. Yeah. I sit there going like, um, I'm the guy that just sits and goes, um, uh, and I'm looking at the letters and they just, I, I have no clue what can well, be made with it. The great thing is you just go, hmm, clonk. Didn't know that was a word. I know. Sixty-five points. <laughs> oh, you could you could put shit down and then the, it'll tell you like, yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, a word. That's, that's why, yeah, any idiot can play. That's the most frustrating <laughs> part. Jimmy had that recently where he had some. 75 <laughs> point word. Like, he was, does I, not know this is a word. I lucked up on it, and it used to be well, you have to look at the Scrabble dictionary, and then you, you get one turn, ah. and if not, then you, you lost your turn. Yeah. Now, you could just go 40 times in a row, <laughs> and whatever sticks, sticks. Like, Jimmy doesn't know that fish knocker is a word. Yeah. <laughs> How about when something is a word, you're like, zen. Doesn't work. Yeah. There's some Z word like Zen. That right, work exactly. Like. Zod. How many people Fox from Superman 2 have tried Zod? Yeah. Zod. <laughs> no good. <laughs> but fucking Z A is a word. Q I. Z A, yeah. Quone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that? Quone. It means to quone. Yeah, Kramer tried that one. It didn't work. Right. <laughs> he knows. Thank God someone gets my Seinfeld reference. <laughs> gonna... Rob knows. It to quone. <laughs> But it's it's, it's funny when, someone, yeah. when Alec Baldwin got in trouble on the plane for not for his, and then they said he was being difficult because he was playing words with friends. I'm just thinking, well, he probably had a great word. Like I get, I get <laughs> why, why he didn't he want would, to shut his fucking yes, phone off. Yeah, right. yeah. I understand so the fucking mania. <laughs> Losing an online game is humiliating. It's funny when you're playing and you go back and forth like. I hit a word, you hit a word, and you're like in real time doing it, and all of a sudden they disappear for a day. You're like, uh -huh. what is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> what happened to Jimmy? <laughs> Do you play Scramble? Anybody play Scramble? No, it's, Where, it, it's, no. it's like a word search, but you have to drag your finger over the... Oh, over yeah. the, oh my That's God, it's one. fucking nerve-wracking. <laughs> You need at least two minutes. That's a great game to play while you're shitting, because you can't stop, because it's a two-minute clock. So you just drop a deuce and play scramble. Try to time it out. Every murder of it. Sounds great, Jimmy. <laughs> it's, just, it's like words with friends. It's the same as words with scramble. I've noticed uh, with the advent of the uh, smartphone, uh, a lot more time spent on the bowl. Unnecessarily. <laughs> Unnecessarily. You, you stand up off the ball, you look like that newborn fawn. Your legs are just <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know. shaky and numb. everyone's phones are. There. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. fecal matter over it's everyone's true. phone. It's got to be. That's, that is a terrible thing. But nothing can be worse than the uh, motel room remote anyway. So. Okay. <laughs> right, exactly. If you was, if your She's immune fine. system can handle that. You can handle anything. And, and, and you know, I'm not a germaphobe. Uh, so I, I really don't care, but I've I've used the remote while I was eating in a hotel room, and you just think like ah, I got my hands on it, yeah. got my hands oh, on yeah, the yeah. burger. It's, it's just I figure it builds up some kind of fucking immunity <laughs> to <Gross>. something. <laughs> it's you, good for you. In the end. Yeah, it's good. I for guess you. it makes you a little bit healthier, or strengthens you, but I don't know. Who cares? Good yeah. germs. Yeah. Yes, what yes. are you doing, Robbie? Why'd you come in? To yeah. Town? Why'd you come I off the mountains? I am pushing the movie, pushing oh. the record, just pushing stuff all over people. When's Lords of Salem open? <laughs> <laughs> ah, Friday. What is today? Today's about Tuesday. Tuesday, 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 yeah. Tuesday on the 19th. Is the 19th Friday? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. very cool. Soon, finally. Soon, finally. Get it out of my life. <laughs> how, how far into a movie opening do you know, like, uh, if it's going to be a great weekend? Like, do you, do you get, like, counts, like, the first couple of hours? Or do you obsess about that or wait the next they day? They kind of do, but um, I don't. Um, I, I don't really pay attention that much anymore because I was doing that on Halloween when that came out, and I remember getting the counts. They're like, well, the uh, 11 a.m. screenings doesn't look good <laughs> on Friday. Like, the movie had been out like 15 minutes. Holy shit. And then, <laughs> then it was great. And they're like, oh, my, we're adding extra screenings at midnight because they're, they're selling out. But it was like, 
All right. Well, why do you start the day with like you know, <laughs> yeah, a 10 a.m. Yeah. screening in Boise didn't really do well? You know? it's like, <laughs> okay. I don't even want to know. Not a lot of people getting their coffee and going to Halloween. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> I mean, it's just like, I don't. Uh, you don't have an early morning. I'm crowd. done worrying about things I can't control. <laughs> right. It is what it is. How much <laughs> you collect stuff? We had Kirk Hammond in, and he has a, a book out of like all this great like uh, horror film. Yeah, he has a lot of stuff. Do you have? Do you have a lot of stuff like that too? Like, do you collect the originals, or you don't care? I had a lot of stuff for a while, but then I stopped collecting it, and I just gave up. <laughs> Why did it become too <laughs> it overwhelming? Just it's just one day. I was just like, I just don't want all this crap. Yeah. <laughs> like my like, and I can I I can now look at someone else's stuff and go oh that's cool without mm. feeling like now i must own all that also right which is like how i used to feel like and now and now <laughs> i must have it you know now i don't feel that way but you still have a bunch of stuff yeah i still have the stuff that i had i've been trying to liquidate it but uh you should when your friends visit you that you should send them out with something i was sort of doing <laughs> that for a while actually because i had like kirk collected so many movie posters that i was giving them away at every Everything and they were very, you know, well, that's weird. expensive ones. But that's weird. Uh, that you never you gave away one. a lot of stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <but, laughs> they probably knew you'd have nowhere to put it. You're not, you're not going to hang a movie poster in your living room over my daughter's bed. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I knew the day I was like, I I would frame them, but then I had so many they were just on huge rolls. And right. they were all like really expensive, and I'd be going through. Them, like, I don't even remember buying this. I don't remember oh, buying shit. this. Oh shit! this Why did I buy this twice? Oh my god! I'm like, this oh is man! Done. Wow! <laughs> done. What's the one piece you can't let go of? Is there any that you're like, I re- I love this one too much to let it go? No, I mean I have some that I mean I, if I have a bunch of um, Lon Chaney ones from from you know silent movie posters that some of them are the. Wow. The only existing copy, or maybe there's one other one that exists. Like really, oh, stuff wow. like that. Those, those are pretty cool. But do you yeah. display all your stuff? I, I'm actually having shelves built, like to to put them up because I have no place to put all this stuff. Right. And uh, I, I want to get it all all displayed nice. So there's no reason for it to just sit in the closet. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, it becomes like an endless like. I'm going to move these boxes to this storage space now. And one day when I display it all, yeah, that day yeah. never comes. <laughs> yes. yeah. You think you're going to open a museum? It goes to another basement <laughs> that will eventually flood, and you go, <laughs> all gone. Garbage now. Because that happened to me once I had like every vinyl and the post of the oh, ones. Shit. So much stuff in the basement flooded. And it was almost kind of a good feeling. Like, like well, a relief. Oh, that crap's gone. <laughs> Done. I don't need that shit anymore. <laughs> yeah, it feels irreplaceable, and some of it is, but it's like, what am I going to... It's, it's just the idea of possessing it is much more important than actually showing this stuff off, and it, it becomes this creepy obsession that there's no Yeah, once no you lose the game. obsession, right. you, you're like, ugh. Yeah. That almost gives me anxiety to think of having all that crap now. <laughs> did, you, did you see that tweet the other day that someone said that, uh, that uh, I should go on tour with you and come out on stage before you start? That would be good. Yeah, I saw that tweet to me, do you mean? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Comedian stand-up at rock shows always goes over really well. No, I was thinking maybe do something different. Maybe, uh, oh, yeah. I don't know, I'll leave it up to you. Maybe dance. <laughs> dance? <laughs> How about just walk slowly down some stairs while other girls dance around you? That'd be uh, nice. I've seen you do that. It works. Cool. Yeah. For my new comedy special. Uh, Rob and I wanted to do like the everybody's like anti show business and they just show up like a t shirt and they don't really care. Yeah. And we're like, let's we should celebrate that we're in show business. Let's make this special at the beginning of it. Make a show. Really great. Like, like a, a Busby Berkeley uh beginning yeah, uh, entrance. So, yeah, we have like we actually have showgirls come out yeah. and they're, they're like dancing this really cool song and then this <laughs> thing in the middle enters and I come down and all these beautiful girls come down with me. <laughs> nice. yeah, it's awesome. It's it's awesome. It really came out great. <laughs> <What a roll. laughs> yeah. How does it been done? It's, it's so funny because as a comedian, then you have like this huge opening, and then it's like, hey, so uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. my wife's crazy, right? Hey, you yeah. guys, there's a new pope, huh? You can't wait in line at the airport as much as I do. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that weird? Rock is so much more built for a grand entrance. Yeah. Because with comedy, it's like the opening joke better fucking hit. If, it, if it's a oh, five, man. it's really right. humiliating. Exactly. <laughs> kind of a letdown. Yeah. And then you see people going like, oh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's not funny, is it? They're all standing up and you're like, fuck the West Side Highway, huh? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Get shit. Maybe it's one of those nights where Chris Rock shows up and doesn't tell anybody he's going to be here. <laughs> when, when are you airing? You're airing in what, July? Yeah, July. I'm trying to find I have it on my phone somewhere. Oh, yeah. Not that that works for radio, but no, it wouldn't yeah, awesome. we, we don't care. We got to see the fellas. Sixty percent of the stuff we do is not radio friendly. Right. Right. Yeah, I do it's a lot of visual amazing. stuff here. Yeah, but eighty percent of the audio shit is not radio. <laughs> 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 it's great because Rob has. Uh, that was just a rehearsal. <laughs> Rob will just be like when we were doing it. Rob's like, so then we're gonna have. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. It's going to look like the Gong Show in Sunny and Cher, and they're going to have showgirls come out, and then Tom's going to come flying out of the center. <laughs> oh, you hear that? <laughs> oh shit! It's got that cool sound, uh, like the old yeah. oh, projector, right? And they just, and then all the production people are like, "Yeah, okay." Rob's like no. staring at me. Like, no, it's what we're and doing. And then first, the giant silhouette appears of you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's it's pretty not full of yourself there, Tom. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> it's a real show, like showgirl set. It looks like a Vegas set. Yeah, and no, the, it's huge. But yeah. it's really, really well lit. Um, it looks like a Vegas set. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's funny, <laughs> you know, like we were just saying off air, you know, doing the special was a little taste of, no, let's be like a star. Let's make this thing badass and big and, uh-huh. and which natu- comes naturally to Rob. Because, you know, we were saying how rock stars, like a rock star, yeah. will, you dress, you don't have like an option in your closet of like a polo shirt yeah. when you walk out. <laughs> you, have, you have all badass rock star clothes, even when you're in your most casual. But for a comedian to like go that full bore, it was like, oh, is this okay? Am I, am yes. I allowed to walk out? Like too this? much? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's very out of context. Yeah. I love the comic. sound of that fucking old time. Yeah, it's a great cam- sound. And, and Tiny. It, it, it looks mm. like an old time camera. Like, I don't know how you get those little well, you know the, what he did? Jump. This is how. This is why Rob is great to work with. He, I'm like, let's do a th- an opening of g- getting to the special where we're walking through the city streets and it looks kind of '70s retro. You know, we'll dress mm. like that. It's like the French Connection or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Like Popeye Doyle going to. So dirty. We right? show up to do it and Rob's like takes out this phone. And he's like, all right, let's go. I'm like, what do you mean, let's go? Where's the crew? <laughs> Where's the makeup? That's Where's not the, the part where he was thinking, oh, it's great. <laughs> 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 That's why he's going like Cynthia was right. He filmed it all <laughs> off an app on the iPhone. Holy shit. He's walking shit. through the city and he's like, okay, now come this way. And that whole wow. thing you just saw was all done from the iPhone. No kidding. That yeah. looks fucking. Who That's said who's What app is it? It looks like Mean Streets. <clears throat> this is the intro. It's like 16 millimeter, yeah, 8 millimeter. Oh, William Stevenson. Okay, that's how yeah, I, that's how I knew. Those effects. Yeah. Right. Wow. I think I got that and one. we had no permits. We were filming walking around. <laughs> we were in the elevator. The guy got in the elevator. You're like, Told him, I told him to you, move. Could, buddy, could you move? <laughs> yeah, could you get out of the way? <laughs> yeah, get out of the shot. You're in the, the shot. Yeah, what, are you doing? <laughs> what do you do for audio, though? Like, that's the problem with those. Is the was, audio, or is you, are you mic'd, or is it silent? It was silent. Oh, okay. Well, well, like, well, you know, we didn't use it to shoot the actual special. Right, right. I mean, that, that's... Uh, <laughs> right. Now, that would be silly. <laughs> and then Rob was standing up in the middle of the auditorium. <laughs> yeah. Just, well, no, just keep going. No crowd. That was pretty funny, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Take it again. How many cam- oh, here You're right. Your parents are stupid. <laughs> <laughs> they don't understand Facebook. <laughs> Did you use smoke? We, I shot in Boston, and we couldn't use smoke, and I was panicked about it. Until Louis told me, like, I never use smoke, but I was convinced you had to use it before the show. Or did you use it or no? Smoke? Oh, we so, did on the first one. Like, uh, t- for the light, for the Oh, light you effect. don't have to. We didn't on this one because we wanted to make it look like a TV show, but we did on the first one. Not so for the lights, but more so that it would look like the audience was smoking. Oh, yeah. really? Okay. Like we had the smoke in the crowd, so that because he uh, Tom wanted to look like you know like Richard Pryor Sunset Strip concert or something. Mm. Okay. So we tried to make it look like everybody was smoking. Yeah. Oh, but you didn't use it for this, so it's encouraging to hear that, that it's not no, as yours uh, looks critical to smoke. I love how it looks, but I was panicky about it because Boston has all these weird fire code regulations yeah. now. Right. Yeah, New York does too. Using foggers in New York is tough. They yeah. Don't want to use them. They, they won't yeah, let you yeah. shut the because uh, you got to shut the smoke alarms off. And I guess after that great Wi Fi, everybody fucking panicked. Yeah. Yeah. When are I you think- going on tour again? June. 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 Is it a big sh- outdoor show? Yeah, it's summer a Mayhem show? Festival. Headlining that. Oh, ah, June cool. Twenty ninth is the first show. Is it going to be a? It's, so it'll be a big, the big, big show, uh, the big shoe. Nice. Yeah, it's the really big shoe. <laughs> Did you? I saw Rob at uh, what was it? Uh, Roseland when you were here or Bowery? Uh, what? No, Hammerstein. Oh, Hammerstein. Yeah, that yeah, was the yeah. little shoe. And it was a little show, and he was backstage. It was like a kind of a smaller. Set. That was a and nightmare. He's like, we can't, we can't. I have this new thing that we drive around on stage. <laughs> it won't fit through the door. <laughs> <laughs> drive Half around. the show was in the truck. That was <laughs> yeah. a drag. He was all uh, pissed off. His show was so huge, like with monsters and this giant. And he's like, we got this great thing that we drive around. What is it like a? <laughs> it looks like a giant tank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he but, uh, drives around on stage. Well, the, 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 the funny thing was, they're like, well, I'm like, how come we can't get on stage? Like, we have to load it through the front. <laughs> <laughs> so once the crowd's in, there's no way to access yeah, the stage. Yeah. I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> he was Good so planning. 
Yeah, that was Jim Florentine was backstage. And like, I want to see it. Uh, <laughs> come on, man. Just do it. <laughs> right. What's the problem? Who cares? Who cares? Yeah, there's no, no pyro in New York. But that's going to be good. That's gonna, I can't wait to see the big show. That's the part about being a rock star that's hard. Is like There's so much to this. Like, being a comic, you just fucking walk out, and all you uh, need is the mic working. Right. But yeah. these guys yeah, have so great to be able to come up with ideas and make them reality. You know? It's like, yeah, yeah I want a big tank. I want to drive it around. Fuck it. <laughs> right. yeah, it's also great to just walk on stage with a microphone and pick up a chick. Oh, it's just me and my suitcase. Yeah, right. <laughs> Although a Jim Norton check and a Rob Zombie check are not the same check. <laughs> but it is easier. You don't have to worry about anything. You don't have to worry about like necessarily your voice. And there's a lot of shit things have to put up with this kind of yeah. New yeah. York's a rough place to work too because the fucking the unions and the stages. It's much harder to get stuff done here. New York. Oh yeah, New York is the toughest actually. It's really difficult. Yeah. You know what's difficult? Having your family come see you perform at a place called Bananas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, bananas. <laughs> <laughs> bananas. Bananas. It's always got to be some cute, funny name. You know? I always, yeah, that's like Comedy. every comedian on a talk show. Like, and where are you? Yeah, they always seem like they're embarrassed to say, <laughs> yeah. I'll be at the Chuckle Hut. I didn't even want to say the name. Uh, it's never a great name either. No. I'll, I'll perform it Laugh Until You Jizz. <laughs> Brand new club. <laughs> I hear they treat you real good. They, yeah. let, they let you eat off the whole menu. <laughs> are you are you not uh, are you done with uh, you, you and Manson are not touring anymore, right? That's no, that tour ended. Yeah. Okay. Was and, it really bad, or is that like all blown out by like? Oh, it was sites? fine. It was like one weird moment. Mm -hmm. It was fine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's like people grab that. And they make it look like that's the way the entire tour, I know, the entire I know, situation is. They like a story. Yeah. They like a. So who else is on Mayhem? You, you you headline the whole thing. This is one of those like all day long. Things? Yeah, one of those all day things. So I don't know. Five Finger Death Punch is on. Uh, I like those guys a lot, man. I, I fucking I didn't know Machine their first Head. two records, but this third album, uh, American Capitalist, is fucking fantastic. Oh yeah, they're mm -hmm. really heavy. Yeah, it's like a thousand bands. Nice. <laughs> Literally, a thousand, a thousand bands. bands. Do you care who you're on after ever? Are you ever concerned about following somebody? No. <laughs> Can't worry about it. Do you worry about what they do, or do you have what you'll allow them to do stage-wise before? Like, you don't want pyrotechnics or anything that kind of resembles your show? Um, that really hasn't been a problem, I mean, for the most part. And we don't... Nobody does that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. No, we don't, we don't try to limit what anyone else can do. That'd be it's pretty lame. Because I've seen... <laughs> I've seen... I remember I went to... It was years ago, 20 years ago. And Woodstock 94, they had comedy on the side set. It was fucking horrendous. I mean, we, wow. just, we just bombed in front of people all, in the like, mud. probably can't hear you. <laughs> they did, unfortunately. It was oh. so <laughs> Believe me, they oh, heard it. was the situation. They heard yeah. every word. They heard it and they rejected it. <laughs> <laughs> trying to help you out there, Jimmy. It was on these side stages. But uh, on the main stage, the headliner was Aerosmith. And before was Mattel. Metallica in 94, and I'm like, why the fuck would you want to go on after Metallica? Like, what is Aerosmith yeah, doing? Right. And uh, I guess they were the bigger name. Right. But it just, it seemed like a rough go. They want to be big. <laughs> Yeah, some, like, they went on after Kiss. I'm, I saw them in 2002, and I was like, why would you follow Kiss? It's just ego shit, obviously. You think so? Yeah. Maybe. I was at the Woodstock 99, when, and I was on the stage, like on the side of the main stage, you know, bringing up bands and doing stuff like that. And it was, everyone was like, and here's James Brown, and everyone would kind of hang out and high-five him on his way. And then, then when Metallica came in, it was like, everybody off the stage! <laughs> and it was just like an army. They just yeah. kicked everybody out. I don't care. No one has a credential to stay oh, up here. Shit. And they just blew everybody out, and it was just like, Nothing but business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the way it goes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's the way it goes. I got booted to it, and it was in fucking, uh, was it Bonnaroo? When they had headline Bonnaroo a few years ago, we were all on the stage, and they're like, nope, Metallica has everybody cleared off. Yeah. And then you harumph, harumph on the way out. <laughs> yeah. Well, sometimes you got to do that, though, because you get people standing around, and you go, please move, and they're like, eh, like, Please move, because that thing you're standing in front of is about to explode. Right. <laughs> you know, right. that's his cock. Fire, shoot, <laughs> fire shoots out of that thing that you're sitting on. <laughs> so, so you might want to back up. Have you ever almost been burned? I mean, you know, fucking Gene Simmons obviously has been. Hetfield got hurt. Yeah, I mean, it's it's happened. It sucks. Wrong place. But, uh, you know, it gets better as the years go on. Was yeah. it your fault, or was it a technical glitch on their part? It was their fault. Okay. Jeez. The thing I'm more worried about is sometimes you have the fire that's shooting up, but 
uh, I thought we were going to light our drummer on fire many times because especially outdoors it's going up and then the wind suddenly oh, hits the wind and suddenly it's going this way and he's like <laughs> <laughs> you know ducking trying not to it's still, full, it's still playing though. Isn't it ever yeah. nice just to do a small show where you don't have to worry about the stage show, like where you just do a fucking plain gig and you don't have to worry. There's no there's no, no setup, or do you don't like doing? I anymore? hate doing that. Oh, you do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to get more intimate, as some people say. Right. I, I want to be less intimate. You do. Yeah. <laughs> less connected to them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I love the last show I saw when. You yelled at everybody about their phones because you know he comes out and everybody has their oh, phones right, out, yeah. and, there, and he just rips into them. It's really like, just no, like, hey, you're my fans, but it's just like, you fucking morons, put your phones down and enjoy the concert. <laughs> well, it's funny and, for a long time because everyone's yeah. like, eh, he's not talking to me. <laughs> he doesn't mean me. <laughs> it's getting embarrassing. But yeah. it was great because then it worked, and all of a sudden the phones were gone. Nobody was really holding up phones. It was like, and then it became like a party. Yeah, yeah it's really funny. Yeah. How you can feel it. The, because nobody will jump around and no one will have fun because they're so busy sure filming they this horrible shot. video that they're never going <laughs> right, to right, watch right. Right. <laughs> that they can put on YouTube and get six views of. But, <laughs> yeah. but when they stop and they go, oh, fuck, this is actually happening live. I can have fun. <laughs> right. It is it's weird. Like, so much better. So you find that they, 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 they experience the live show less and your audience reaction is deadened by them all holding Oh, yeah, phones. yeah. Hell sure. yeah. Totally. Because they're not paying attention. I mean, they're staring at this. Right. And so you're looking down, and no one's actually. Yeah, they're making at a you. video. They're not yeah. enjoying the show they're at. It's, yeah, it's and crazy. Then texting their friend. Yeah, it's yeah. really weird. Five years from now, it'll be Google Glasses, though. Like, it, 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 this is just a, a temporary thing while people get used to capturing everything. <laughs> right. We'll be used to it sooner or later, and then you look out, and everybody will have these fucking 3D glasses. <laughs> 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 it, streaming like where you bought your shoes across the glasses. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <those are> Zappos. <laughs> Hey, when, when is your CD I'm coming out? No shoot. <laughs> <laughs> when is your CD out? Uh, 23rd. So that's like next Tuesday. What's or it called? Yeah, next Tuesday. Venomous Rat Regeneration Vendor. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> Venomous Rat Regeneration, Regeneration Vendor. Vendor. You know, I, I came up with that title, didn't realize. I think that was a Neil Young record. It's <laughs> 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 acoustic. It's <Just>. acoustic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of the slower, <laughs> slower <laughs> albums. <laughs> yeah, when he was rockabilly. And all of the real fans have probably pre ordered it. I, I mean, hope so. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Push those three copies out the, the door. The guy that has the zombie tattoo. <laughs> he has pre-order. a Rob Zombie tattoo, and he won't pre-order. I'm going to buy it when it comes out. I know, but the pre-order makes the artist see how many people are buying his stuff. Yeah, uh, then, then I'll pre-order. I wouldn't have checked, so it doesn't matter. You could have bought it. <laughs> All right, yeah, I know, but Sam, just, I thought qu- it was one less than it should have been. Now I know. <laughs> Sam, you got a question? Yeah, sure. I mean. Oh, <laughs> Why don't you go Sam. to a microphone. Do you know uh, Sam's Sam? Big fan. Yes, from last time. Oh, <laughs> I'm glad that you really have made no impact on Rob and his name. I remember. Is on He's you. a massive fan. <laughs> I um, remember. I thought it was interesting. A minute ago, you said you were. Kind Why of wouldn't s- you stand here, Sam? <laughs> yeah, what are you doing? Mike over there by your question. camera, making your idol turn around. What's the matter with you? <laughs> that you were done with the Lords of Salem. You wanted it out of your life. Yeah. How long do you? I'm just joking, but. Don't <laughs> 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 answer the question, Sam. Oh, oh Sam. Oh, boo, Sam. <laughs> but you move on from project to project. Like, do you really get sick of things? No, I don't get sick of it. Um, <laughs> Dumb questions. It's just like uh, <laughs> it's like anything else, you know. I, I mean, the movie has been done for a while. It's coming out, so I've seen it a million times. I've worked on it thousands of hours, but you forget no one else has seen it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's like it's mm. kind of weird. You want it off your plate. And you're now you worrying about the next thing, right? stuff for the tour. You know, yeah. you're on to the next thing that's happening. That's, right. that's that you really is on your. Yeah, that's on your plate that you have to deal with. So you have to worry about marketing it and all that, or do you leave that to other people? Well, you know, that's kind of why I'm here, I guess. <laughs> exactly, Sam, oh for two. <laughs> so Rob, why do you refuse to do promotion while you're here? <laughs> Those are bad questions. They're terrible yeah. questions. Rob is uncomfortable. No, no, I'm not. I mean, uh, yeah, I don't know. What was the question? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, do you? I want to know. Do you ever like want to? Because you, you, you know, you're, you're zombie. Do you ever like want to like write like a ballad or is there anything you ever wrote? You're like, fuck, I would love to do that, but it just doesn't fit any album I put out. Um, I mean, I like all kinds of music, but I. No, it doesn't fit, and there's nothing. I hate when. 
I don't hate when it, but it always seems a little embarrassing sometimes when someone wants to like, oh, this is this is the other side of me. Yeah, uh, yeah. Check <laughs> this out, and you're like, really? Uh, mm. Not many bands have avoided that. Sucks. The other side is a douche. <laughs> 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 it's like that Garth Brooks, Chris Gaines thing. Oh, oh, really? Right. You were sort of like a Prince guy on the inside. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? That was that? that was the weirdest Didn't like one shoes ever. And, <laughs> what, was doing? what was he doing? Hey, that was bizarre. That was really bizarre. What the hell was that? I don't know. Metallica no one got knows. a lot of flack when they did a couple of the, you know, it's amazing how many like real Metallica fans hate uh, the Black Album. It's like, I love the Black I, Album. I do too. I think oh it's God. fucking great. But I remember when that came out, I was down by CBGB's, I don't remember who was playing, and people, though somebody had the record, it just came out there, and he was like smashing it in the street. <laughs> And I was like, what the, oh, really? like, what the hell? Yeah, that's a little well, extreme. What got you, Sandman or nothing else matters? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> right. well, get that reaction out of Well, they got upset when they cut their hair. The fans lost their minds at first. Yeah. Right. Just over them cutting their hair. <laughs> well, I guess it just goes to show how fanatical their fans are. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Over everything. Fair enough. So no, people don't like when a band changes because it makes us feel older. That's all it is. It's like if the band <laughs> somehow matures, it's like, right. oh, fuck, I'm not 22 anymore. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, you're stuck in that weird thing where... Uh, they want you to stay the same like you can you like you <laughs> that would be great but you know you just don't have that ability to stay <laughs> the same it just doesn't work that way you know you get older things change and and, I, and also everybody remembers things differently mm. like that you you can't come to a show and experience it like you're 15 and you just snuck out of the house again it's right. not my fault it's a product of your life too yeah <laughs> i'm sorry that you're 45 and have five kids <laughs> you know and you're not a 15 year old anymore yeah, yeah, he that's, sucks you, now. No, yeah. no, you suck now. Yeah. <laughs> Your life sucks now. <laughs> you know, you try, but uh, you know, it's, it's all perspective. Do you change as an artist? Like, I mean, I know you do as an artist, but do you find that like, I don't really want to do that song anymore because like, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not. Doesn't I mean the same. <laughs> like, I don't know. I never really. I, as long as the crowd's into it, I'm into it because I never really felt like. You know, oh man, I was in this. Yeah, I always think it's a little like, oh man, I was in this mind space. Or whatever. I'm just not that, uh, bro. I'm not in that mind space. <laughs> <laughs> Can't go there. I, it seems like horseshit. <laughs> right. I think it is, and it's it, it's it's bad for the fans. It's like, yeah, I want to hear that. Right. Oh, you're never gonna play that again. Oh wow, it's not <laughs> yeah, about I you, mean, fucko. I, I think <laughs> you know, like Tom was saying at the beginning. I mean, there's a there's a big element that it is show business, and I always think I've always had the attitude that if you're going to play shows for free in your basement, then great. You don't have to play your hits. You don't have to do this. You can do whatever the fuck you want. But as soon as someone buys a ticket, yeah. right, you're you committed to, to do what... You, know, you, oh, can't, yeah. ta- you can't please everybody. You can't tailor make exactly what they want, but you have to make an effort to try to figure oh, out what perish, you want. Perish the thought. You play Karma Police or Creep, you motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Radiohead <laughs> refuses uh, to play Creep. Good. Really? They, they haven't played Creep in... I, don't, I Who never knows how long. that. I know. Yes. I know. Steve really Miller Band came to my school <laughs> during his jazz phase. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Wow, what a great time to see him. So <laughs> disappointed. Oh, my God. It was a big Did he at least that. rework the hits? Nothing. It's what jazz Nothing. fucking number? No, it was oh, all, all this jazzy, feel good stuff. I was like, what the hey? <laughs> what no jungle what? love, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't get it. I mean, I can, I can get maybe that you thought that that would be a good idea, but once it's not. Yeah. Like, right. like there's songs that we never play, and somebody like in the band like, oh, we gotta play this, let's play. We'll play it one night, and halfway through the song, I was leaning, but we are never fucking playing this. <laughs> yeah, this right. is why we never played it in the first place. <laughs> Done. Because right. as soon as the crowds don't react, I mean, yeah. it's exactly like being a comedian. Yeah. If the joke's not working, you're gonna keep doing it in your set forever because you like that joke. Right. And if every night the crowd is just one. looking at you like you're an idiot. No, you go done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, sometimes you're like, this. I'm gonna be stubborn and keep it until it works. And the other times, the, halfway out of your mouth, you're like, this will never be fun. <laughs> <laughs> what was I thinking? You want to perform to a sea of disappointment? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's the same thing I'm jealous with singers about is the same thing that seems like it was hard. Like the fact that like you know, a musician can do a song for a long time and people still love it. And it's like, fuck, man, that must be great. But it also seems hard because like then they want you to do that. So like, Kiss has to do rock and roll all night, which not that that's a terrible thing, but like, what if they don't want to do it one night? Ah, they still got to do it. Right. And they got to make believe they're still way into it. They have to feel as fresh doing it yeah, as they absolutely. did. I could never do that I with a joke. I think that's pretty brilliant. 
Then again, if I had fucking chicks showing their tits, maybe I could do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's really like it's really all about the crowd. I mean, I think that's why, like, going back to the cell phone thing, why when the crowd starts doing that, that really like as soon as the crowd's weird, I kind of don't feel like playing any of the songs. Wow, so feel yeah, like, it feels like a weird thing. It feels like a chore. Like, but right. if they're into it, you can play a song for the ten thousandth time. And be like, this is awesome. Yeah, yeah everybody ever break out a joke that. It's like if you're in a like a special show or something, and you break out a joke that you've done, you know, years ago, and it just slaughters. And you're Rob, like, why don't I do this? <laughs> yeah, occasionally I'll do that, but it's like uh, usually it's one that I, once I tape it, I'm done with it. Like you don't ever want to do it again because then the crowd knows the the fucking punch. The pun- yeah, right, right. Yeah, but I, I usually don't retire jokes until I tape them. I right. milk them until, <laughs> <laughs> until, until, yes. it, until it's on tape somewhere. Then I'm fucking finished with it. Right. I wonder if the crowd minds though. I know mm. comedians always say that, but. I don't Does know. Does the crowd actually care? You know, I I, don't I, think they I do. did a show I did a show in uh, San Jose recently, and then San Francisco shortly after that. And this one guy was like, "I was I saw you in San Jose like a month ago, and now I'm here." And I was like, yes. "Oh, did you did I show you some new stuff?" And he was like, "What do you mean? It's all funny." What do you, uh, what uh, do you, he didn't even have the concept of new stuff, old stuff. He was like, wow. "I had a great time at both." Yeah, but those wow. are the people that will sit there and go like, ah, oh, and they won't laugh a lot because they've seen it. Because a joke uh-huh. catches you off guard. That's the, what a joke kind of does, and that's why you laugh at it. it, it, right. it catching you off guard is a big part I, of it. I think certain comics can do it, and certain ones can't, like, to, based on their act, the material, how they... Because right. Brian Regan, for some reason... We all know the punchlines. I've lines. seen Brian Regan. Uh-huh. I know some of the punchlines. Uh, to some of his old stuff, and it, I still, still laugh, laugh my fucking ass off. Well, yeah, he's it's the only comic that odd. people request fucking bits. They'll yeah. scream them out the entire show, and he doesn't mind. No, but there's stuff like that Jimmy does that I would want to see again for right. sure. You Occasionally, know? but if it was a whole hour of it, like you know, what yeah. I mean? like the occasional of joke course. you could throw in, or I'll yeah, sure. I think you could do it. I think that the crowd doesn't pay attention like you think they do. Mm. Yeah, because the amount of times people go like, "Hey, man, why didn't you?" Fucking play such and such. I go, that we just did. <laughs> that was the song that we just played. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> right. uh, uh, that's when you realize no one's paying attention. Yeah, they are. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a much bigger deal. I say yes. Well, that's what I used to yeah. care. Like, used to freak out and someone go, like, "How was the show?" I was like, "Well, you know, there was no guitar for the last four songs." I didn't even notice. <laughs> yeah. No, no. <laughs> what? Right. Bass and drums, the only thing happening for the last 20 minutes of the show. <laughs> I didn't even no notice. Yeah. Yeah. That oh, song, John Five was picking his nose. Cat joke. <laughs> no one's going to go, hey, that's a thing for the other special. Uh, right. No one's going to know. I know. And the, the other thing is, we think everybody knows our stuff. It's, yeah. It's pretty arrogant to think everyone that in really this crowd is. knows you so intimately and has mm. seen you over and over. Oh, they know I've done this before. Right. Yeah, they're no. going to recognize a joke I did in 2002 on my second CD. <laughs> like, oh, God, they're going to kill me after <laughs> Right. Nobody gives a shit. No. My manager doesn't even recognize it. No. no, is that new? No, idiot. I'm talking about Schwarzenegger as the governor. <laughs> How new could it be? Do you? What do you? When you right before you walk out, like what? What is it going? Like, are you putting yourself in any kind of a? Are you like, a, hey, uh, just make sure my coffee's ready, or are you getting yourself into a complete uh, a vibe of some sort? No, I'm just pretty much calm. Usually, mm-hmm. what I'm trying to do is, uh, I always have that moment. I bet you guys have this where you're like. I cannot remember the first line to the first song. Oh, man. And you're like, the music's going. Like, okay, the song's going. I'm going to be coming in any Holy minute. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy fuck. That's, yeah, And yeah, right yeah. when it's right, then you somehow your brain remembers. The second that music. If I sit yeah. there and I'm thinking about it, I'm like, I have no idea what the words of the song are. It's a wow. scary thing. <laughs> and, I, and I'll go from bit to bit sometimes and not remember. And here's how you know I have no idea where I'm going. Fuck, man. You guys are good tonight. <laughs> 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 Sip of water, yeah. Sip of water, yeah. and then I just kind of go. I, I just yeah, slow myself down a little bit, and then I, I kind of figure out where I yeah. gotta go. Because usually I'm coming out of like the, there's some doors that open into the drum riser or something, and I'm always every night I go, I gotta write the words down to the first song so I can read. <laughs> of course, I forget to do that right. every night for the last twenty years, <laughs> yeah. but it's still like it's, it's, such it's amazing weird... how there's a part of your brain that just is working on it without you being in charge. Like in yeah, you're just like I'll be in the middle of a joke sometimes and think, wait, I don't know where this is going, and then it just comes pops out of your mouth, and it's because there's a different part of your brain that's just Jesus. I got this. You think about your laundry. 
Well, it's also, too, when you try to remember lyrics or you try to remember comedy bits, you think of the first word, like, okay, that's uh, this and that's that. But usually in your brain, what takes you is the last word of one thought uh-huh. takes you into yeah. the, the, the first word of the next thought. It's not the first word to the first word. Right, and you're trying to block out all the booing and silence. <laughs> exactly. Like, like I, if I want to give a really a of boring... Yeah, yeah. Just the expected faces all thinking of refunds. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that when I see the cameras up, though, for comedy, because it's like they're going to put it online and then people going to hear the joke but again like you said it gets six views it's like nobody yeah, really gives yeah. it I act like all of YouTube wants to see Jim Norton's new bit where are you going? that's <laughs> yeah, not no. fucking Justin Bieber I have recording an appointment it. right now I have to step out for a couple minutes oh what? shit what? who you yeah. gotta talk to that's more important than your friend Rob Zombie another, another show it's a show the business thing but I'll be right back. Are you going to hang out, guys? Yeah. We have, we, we have our meeting. We have our meeting in a few minutes. Yeah, we got our meeting. Yeah, we got on time to today. Tom. Yeah. Can run left, through. Tom, what are you, doing? Well, you can wait eight minutes. Your phone call's obviously at ten. Oh, he's, he's got a he's got a, a radio phoner. A radio phone. Yeah, but they probably oh. six to ten in the morning. Just probably Pete Dominic. He's calling him down the hall. <laughs> <laughs> These guys suck. <laughs> Here he goes. All right, buddy. All right, Tom. Really you can do it on the air and do two shows at once. Yeah, we've done that before. You want to do that? Yeah, <laughs> you don't want me to. Awesome. Like masturbating in front of you. <laughs> yeah. <it would> be. <laughs> do you like? Uh, do you like directing comedy? I do. Yeah. I mean, I love comedy. I mean, I love being part of it. I mean, I don't. Yeah, I think sometimes you always love the stuff that you feel like you can't do. Right. Like you can understand mm. it and you get it and you can appreciate it, but you couldn't do it. They say when actors meet like athletes, like like when Kareem would meet Nicholson, like all Kareem wanted to talk about was acting, yeah, and all yeah, Nicholson yeah. wanted to talk about was was basketball. I believe that to be true because especially I think for people that are, if you're naturally good at something, it doesn't seem probably, I don't know, especially athletes. I mean, I guess yeah. athletes have to be sort of naturally good at something to be professional. They're probably like bored with the, oh yeah, I know, I'm super fast. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, great. Yeah. But you're you. funny. Yeah. Look, look what you do. Yeah, that's, that's what do point. you do? What do you do on downtime? Like you're a really busy guy. What do you? I don't, I don't know. I don't have any downtime. That's really? Thing, trying to do every, all these projects. My last downtime was uh, I finally had a break and I ended up doing Tom's thing. See, so you're working anyway. <laughs> yeah, so you don't just hang around, maybe glue together a model. <laughs> you know, it's really <laughs> funny. I, we'll I catch up a, on a box set of a TV show. I feel like I, oh, it, I, you know how it is. It's like you just the opportunity comes up and you're like, mm, yeah. okay, I'll do it. Mm. And yeah, yeah. Next thing you know, you're like, oh crap, that's this week, isn't it? Yeah, that's drive, man. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah. You're always busy. You're always fucking doing shit. Well, God, I, I think it's, it's, just... it's it's it's. I think you get this paranoid fear. I mean, I think this business mm. breeds it because you you work so hard to get someplace that when it's happening, you feel like if you start saying no to stuff. Uh huh. <laughs> Remember that last time I said no <laughs> nine <laughs> months ago, and no one ever asked the question <laughs> since. Then? <laughs> no, something. Yeah. yeah no, you feel lucky to yeah. be getting the work, or lucky to be to be doing and creating and just continuing to do so. Yeah, I mean, because there's no guarantee. That's the that's the one thing with with this type of job. You know, weird way to put it, but yeah. there's no guarantee. You know, right. There's no guarantee that it's going to keep going. I mean, it probably will after a certain point. You can feel kind of comfortable, but, you know. No coasting. That's yeah. why, you know, I mean, I always took the point of view that, especially in the rock business, that's why most people seem like they end up broke. They kind of live their lives <laughs> like, this is never going to end. <laughs> yeah. And I would always live it sort of from the point of view of like, I don't know why this is happening, but it's probably going to be over soon. <laughs> So I better be smart about this. Yeah, stock the money away and be He's fucking... got a lot more money in the bank then. Yeah, it's so smart. That's a good way to live. Because too many guys blow through everything they make, and it's like then they're fucking 50 or 60 years old, they got nothing. Yeah, I mean, because it's tough, because I you, you see it, and I've seen it so much, and it's sad, because with most things, especially in music, it seems like you have your, this sounds so cheesy to say, but there's like that peak earning time period yeah. where like it's hitting say like when cds were big yeah. you could literally make so much money but now that's gone that revenue streams okay so you're not making money off cds and now you're back to playing clubs and this and that and suddenly it's like uh <laughs> how am i gonna build back that fortune i wasted <laughs> oh yeah i tap dance at the end of fucking selling merchandise and signings which you can't do when you're in an arena <laughs> when you're in a small theater or comedy club i fucking and, i'll talk to everybody on the and you know out. who brought that up recently it was david lee roth in here about where it all went away. All right, and right, he was right. playing. He he said he got used to playing state fairs. David oh, Lee Roth, right. Van Halen. Holy yeah. fuck! They were playing to the world for so many years. But it seems like there's a comeback if guys hang around long enough and they're good. There, there's like a lot of times those valleys, but a lot of times people start to he crave had a it again. Long and valley they, though. Yeah, I have a theory. My theory is that um, when you're in your sort of like late 30s to mid 40s. That's the bad time. Because, like, when you're young and new, it's like everyone's excited. Then you're kind of like, yeah, you've been kicking around. We're used to you. 
whatever. Right. Uh, but then if you get a little bit past that, if you can survive that, then you're like, suddenly you're a legendary. There's a legend. <laughs> yeah. legend. The legend has arrived. <laughs> <laughs> but it's that middle ground where you're just sort of the... Yeah, yeah. Like, the kind of old guy we're sick of. <laughs> yeah, I remember that guy. Sure hope we're legends, Ant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure well, you see it with everybody. Sure there was a, you know, uh, like, say, you know... <laughs> Like an Aussie or anybody, but there seems like that mid forties time period where people like yep. kind of take the person for granted. Then suddenly it's like, yeah, they rise up to this whole other giant level. And and all all music, it's it's you know it's crazy. You know, what Ozzy did that was smart. I mean, it was the fact that he always embraced really good young bands. Like he took Metallica out when they were yeah. fucking on fire. Motley Crue, you got like he never shied away from young mm. hot talent. No, so he they always owed him stayed something. youthful. Yeah, like his band. The guys in his band and the whole way he'd surround himself, he never mm. seemed like he was like some guy that started in the late sixties. Right. You no, know, it seemed very current, you know. That's whereas crazy. a lot of his contemporaries seem like just mm. everyone they're playing with has like so gray old. short hair, yeah, you know, gone. fucking yeah, yeah. jazz drummer. Yeah. Like, yeah. But then again, it's kind of a it kind of goes along with what we said. I mean, you watch some bands, and you know, it was like I was, I was watching this thing. It was like I don't know what it was. It was like a Gibson guitar concert and it was all these guitar players and you know Ron Wood came out Ron Wood was probably the oldest guy on stage but he's thin he looks great he's dressed super cool and I'm like fuck he looks fuck I mean he looks old but, he's but still... he looks like fucking badass Ron Wood right old. and then the other guys that came out and I don't want to see you there but they're like they got fat they're wearing shorts, sandals, a Hawaiian shirt. You go, this guy used to be fucking badass. Look at him. <laughs> yeah. But then Ron Wood proves that it doesn't matter. Right. He's yeah. still amazing. You know? But then the other guy looks like your dad's like, hey, I got a band on the weekend. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Come see his jam. Oh, my God. Yeah, I guess, uh, weird. I guess yeah. the Stones fucking have managed to look just good through all this time. Uh, always. They're incredible. I want to ask you about Broad Street Bullies. I didn't sure. know you were a hockey fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, That's the I'm, next project. I'm excited about that. Me too. That's a different one. Where are we at with that? Well, the script is finally finished. That was sort of a big project in itself, just because, you know, every script I've done has been a fictitious thing. You can just make up crazy stuff. <laughs> but that I, that was a lot of research, a lot of research, digging that one out. What type of angle are you taking on that? Well, I mean, it's really, um, the, it starts with the formation of the Flyers, because just the formation of the team as the, one of the first expansion teams is a crazy story, up to when they win the Stanley Cup in '74. Right on, man. And that, that's it's a cra I mean, I, that was you know, a crazy group of guys. It's a crazy story too. There's just so much. They were nuts. Stuff that just seems fake. It seems. Yeah. Like, it seems like I just made it up. I think that's going to do really well. I've never heard of them. I'm, I'm not a big hockey guy, so I'd be interested to see <laughs> that. Was the nickname of the team in the yeah the '70s leading up to the yeah. Stanley Cup. Were they All brawlers? Oh, God. Yeah. I mean, they basically, oh, what it was, was one day, Ed, Ed Snyder, who was, owned the team, they, the Flyers were a new team, and they were just getting brutalized, like literally brutalized by other teams on the ice, because they had, they just had, like, as he put it, a bunch of little French guys out there on the ice. And he's like, I don't care if, if we're the best skaters or shooters, I want to build the toughest team that ever ever played hockey. And that's essentially what they set out to do. And, and they accomplished they it. They just, yeah. Oh yeah. fuck I mean, yeah. there was some it up they out had there. The, the Philly flu. They would always talk about where players from other teams would suddenly get the yeah. flu when they went they to Philly because they didn't want to play them. They didn't want to get their teeth knocked out. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow! <laughs> they fought every fucking game. How yeah. good were they? Oh, and then they won the well, Stanley they, Cup they had, No, Rob makes a great point. They they ended up being a really good team, but you know, it was an expansion team, so you're just trying to throw whoever you could find together. So. So you found that making writing this at least was a lot different because you had to stick to a certain amount of facts. Well, yeah, I wanted it to be truthful and I wanted it to be very detailed. But I mean, if you with this with a movie like this, is most of the information is just the the facts of the games and stuff. But trying to just dig out the information on the team, mm -hmm. but it's but it's cool. It, it it's there. It did you have access excitement. to the players? Did you guys? Did you talk yeah, to them? I, yeah, I did. I mean, I went to Philly and was hanging out with the players. But it's funny because you know they won the cup like '74, so it's like almost 40 years ago, Jeez. and most of the team was still at the game. And it's like you know, really? like Bernie Perrant was there and Joe Watson and Gary Dornoff. I mean, it's like they're still legendary guys in that building 40 years later. It's huh. like, it was amazing. Yeah. Have you shot a timepiece yet? Like where you have to have everything like for there. You better every car and every shot better be 1974. Or yeah, earlier. I did. Um, uh, my second movie, Devil's Rejects, was uh, set in 77, I think. Mm. 
Was there any mistakes with consistency you look back at? Like, oh, fuck, I didn't realize there was an iPhone on the table in that shot. I don't think so. I didn't. I, I think we were. I think it's correct. I'm always <laughs> amazed that there are guys out there that'll look for that. There might be something about it. Those picky Pete's. <laughs> but I, but I'm, I'm fascinated with, like, the set designers and stuff yeah. that pull this off, and everything just looks organic. I'm like, you know how hard that is in this day and age to get a whole block to look like it's 1975? I know. It there? gets harder and harder, too, as time goes on. Mm. Because, you, you know, luckily some of these neighborhoods, like, even if you go down Lower East Side, change out the cars it looks like it's yeah 60, right you know, I, the buildings and nothing's changed i actually saw one on the upper east side recently half a block looked like it was r right out of the fucking 70s and then literally right out of the camera was brand new cars and yeah people dress like today really strange and, and you drive sometimes and think what would i have not seen 20 years ago like there are certain digital signs and then you'll get like a little stretch where you're like this all looks like it did when i was younger but then you'll just hit like this sign for iphone or ipad and the it's fuck like, up something yeah or some kind of a yeah, digitally remove it Oh, you can. Post, that's yeah. what they do mostly. Yeah. Yeah. Question, where's... Uh, yeah. uh, I know you're early on, but uh, when is that movie coming out? Uh, Broad Street. I don't know. I mean, I Always. get a lot of touring now, so we'll probably start shooting it late in the year. So it's so, still a ways it's, it's away. It's a ways away, yeah. yeah it's, a, it's a big project, so... Yeah, obviously. Okay. And we got... Right, let's promote properly. Um, <laughs> Rob is uh, is promoting The Lords of Salem. It opens... It's a limited release, uh, April 19th, which is this Friday. Friday. Yes. And uh, the new CD is called Venomous Rat Regeneration Vendor fucking fantastic name and it's out april 23rd uh, of course all the real fans have pre-ordered it um sam. the pretenders that's have what not. i hear that's what i hear yeah yeah sam <laughs> sam's like uh fairweather fans yeah, just, yeah. wait till it comes out yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my friend makes a copy uh robzombie.com <laughs> and of course rw zombie you can even go Twitter. if you want to buy one What's where that? Would you actually, I want to go buy one. Where would I even go? Dude, I drove by Seriously. where Tower Records used to be uh, so down sad, on 3rd like right? Street. It's all gone. Yeah. So love Tower Everything's Records. Gone. But I kind of I kind of like the digital age too, though. Like I, I like the fact that I can think of a song, and and just because we were talking about that Beach Boys song you like, I could just fucking get it on my phone. No, we and get I the convenience, it. but just going through a record bin used to be kind of cool, you know. Newberry no. Comics on uh, Newberry Street. Yeah, you could do it there still. But yeah, they're the one of the last places. The convenience is cool because of that reason. Yeah. But the other thing is cool just because sometimes I like that experience of like I don't know what I'm looking for. Right, but right. on iTunes, yeah. you kind of have to know what you're looking for. It's, you can, That's you can't true. Shuffle through and go, wow, what's this? This is badass. And all of a sudden, you find a surprise, like, oh, fuck. Yeah. What's what's the smell of a CD booklet. What's better than the smell of a CD booklet? Pussy. Yeah. All yeah. right. That's yeah. Good one. That's true. CD booklet comes in forty. <laughs> <laughs> Pizza. I don't know a lot of things. Pizza. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Fair enough. Banana. Right. Coffee. All right. Well, CD booklet comes <laughs> after Melba Toast and before Rock. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Hey, Jimmy, you're gonna be in Baltimore too. Yeah, I'm at McGoobie's Friday, Saturday. I Four shows. Movies? Um, yeah. 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 I couldn't be prouder to you. say that. Yeah. In front of Rob Zombie. Yeah, Magooby's fucking joke house. I'll be there fucking prostituting myself. Well, I feel your pain because all the arenas now have names like that. Yeah, that's true. I, like, there's literally one we play. It's called the 1 800 Ask Gary Arena. Oh, oh Jesus. Uh, that could be the bad. worst name ever. Yeah. The, uh. Or the, the Especially for us. dental clinic. Oh, you can <laughs> ask them. Yeah. Uh, Why? No one wants them the, the Verizon that. Wireless. Yeah, or the Capital One building. Yeah, it's all But that's all right. Cool you, can, you can deal with that in a weird it's way. Not Madison Land Square cool. Garden or fucking Metal They used to have great names. Shit like that, yeah. 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 All right, well, Madison Square Garden here. becomes yeah. like the tourist center. Yeah, eventually, yeah. That and Yankee Stadium are like the two holdouts, but or Texas Stadium, I think, for the Cowboys. Yeah, there's not many. But they're offering way too much money to change the names. How do you say no? to City Field, no. fucking $80 million, whatever they paid. I think it was. I yeah. just made that figure up. Oh, <laughs> it was probably, probably a lot higher, if, if you want to really yeah. get into it. All right, well, we're done for the day. Good everyone. See you all. Thanks, Rob. See you tomorrow.